Wood absent. Mr. Gisono? Present. Mr. Cole? Present. Mrs. Curley? Present. Mr. Kalnan? Present. Mrs. Brown absent. Anyone make a motion to accept the meetings of the last Second. Motion made by Mr. Cowan and seconded by Mr. Cole to accept the meeting minutes. All those in favor? All right. Opposed? First will be a continued case, number 9761-63 Fayette Street. Petitioner Mark Rosenstein by his attorney John Myhouse. Allowance, allowance of a two-family dwelling in an R1 district with less of the required area and right side yard. There shall be no exterior changes to the building and no change of the floor plans in the interior. The building has been taxed as a two-family dwelling by the City of Lynn Assessor's Office. And uh, you had to come back for, we needed new plans and the property had to be cleaned up. I knew the property has been cleaned up. Here are the plans. Four plans as How long has your, your client owned this property? Sorry. No, I was down there Sunday because I wanted to see if the place was cleaned up, and, and it was. The, the weeds and all that mess was gone. It was barrels full of weeds. But if you stood at the front of the house, and it stood out like a sore thumb, and I know it's not your, your fault, but in every direction, everything in the street was immaculate. In front of your house, and I took pictures, was more garbage than I could even care to tell you. It was unbelievable, and I took pictures. It's unbelievable. And I know you don't live there. However, there is a 7-Eleven or something down the street. Right yeah, but you have to be aware. You have to come down and clean that up. You can't just leave it there. It, it was papers and plates and cups, and it was unbelievable. I've been down every day. Well, you weren't there Sunday. You went after the trip. I'm sorry? I'm not good because you went after the trip. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Michael, son. 
so he's presented the existing floor plans, and I can say I was in this house, and it is functioning as a single family right now. It wasn't illegal. Three families back in 2012, before we tried to him buying it, and uh, the, the, the units have not been used. On the existing pl plans that you sent us, on the second level where it says sitting room, that's going to be where your kitchen is. That's where Yeah. Yeah. You notice in the plans we have egress for the second floor. Both front and rear egress for the second floor. Yeah. Is there a living room with this? Second floor? It's going to be the front room up there. It's going to be the this room up here. That's the, going to be the living room. This is the way it is now. That's, that's the living room. That's the room. Where is the room? This thing here? Right here. The bedroom? Yeah, it's, it's only big enough for one bedroom. One bedroom, that's it. So over here, it's only going to be a one bedroom, yeah. All right, but it yeah. does say bedroom here. It doesn't say living room. It makes you think there's two bedrooms. Well, he's got labels label such. That's... But what it was was that he, he gave us the existing, what it looks like now, not what it's going to be. That's why. But are there going to be any changes to this? Or is it, are you essentially, I guess I just want to clarify, are you essentially asking us to just confirm that this is a two-family? Or are you making changes to the property? We're not making any changes to the property whatsoever. So the property has been a two-family. It's been taxed as a two-family, at least since 1999, according exactly. to the assessor's office. And um, you're not making any changes to the property. It's a of structural changes, no. What arose to make you think that it wasn't a two-family? I'm just curious about that. The, uh, after we purchased the building, the property came down. The building department. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The farm people was not a two-family. Okay. Yeah. There was there was confusion in the records. So there's confusion in the records, and we're just seeking yeah. to clarify yeah. the use of the property. Okay. Yeah. So if you found that out three years ago, why are you coming now? Why didn't you do it then? I can't respond to that. I didn't represent him three years ago. Well, I mean, I like him to tell me. Right. Oh, sad story. My children's mother died. So you didn't mind paying taxes on a two-family that wasn't really a two-family? Well, I had planned on ultimately coming before the zoning board, the Board of Appeals, and asking to convert it to a two-family legally. I mean, I knew before I had been done, just done. And uh, it was kind of all quick and so I did what I had to do. Mm -hmm. Was it part of the building department? Was so two family. We made no attempt to circumvent the uh, lines. Well, I'm just surprised that the real estate person we dealt with didn't realize that this wasn't a two family to begin with. Well, you just said you had always planned on coming before us to make it a legal two family, so you knew it wasn't a legal two family from jump. After you purchased it, correct? Three years ago. Well, right. During the purchase, actually. It became clear that it wasn't, and it became clear that's why it had been on the market for so long. And you went ahead anyway, assuming the risk that it might not ever be a two-family legal. Well, I think it's total priority in the water. We had down the it was on the foreclosed piece of property. So he was dealing with a bank. He would bust, bust the teeth above all. So you did, or you didn't know that this was a a legal two-family when you purchased it. Well, when the deal went through, when I started with the bank, it wasn't clear that it wasn't uh, too family. Okay. So when you when you signed the purchase and sale agreement with the bank to buy this house, did the purchase and sale agreement say that it was a two family or a single family? More of a two family, right? In the purchase and sale agreement? I don't know what the purchase and sale agreement of the real estate broker that was dealing. Representative. representative. But it sounds like it became evident during the process, but before closing, right. that it really wasn't a two family. That's very possible. It could have been in that. But if you, you go with a bank, a foreclosed piece of property, you basically assume the risk. Once you sign the papers, they won't, they won't allow you to put in that seven foot deed, zone property, et cetera. It was already in the deal. Already had so he had already made an offer. The offer was accepted. accepted and it was already executed. 
And I know typically you go right to purchase and sale agreement in a foreclosure situation. So that was my question is, was the, did, well, you, you don't know, obviously. So you don't really know, you didn't know that it was a legal single family until after you had already come to terms with the bank, is what you're saying. Okay. Like I said, at one time it was an illegal yeah. free family. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem with this petition because it's been taxed as a two-family for 16 years at least, so. So your, your family's going to live here? My son. Okay. I just hope that your son will keep it as clean as it is now. Do you know what I mean? The weeds and all that. It's a lovely, lovely yard. It's a beautiful yard. It yeah, is. It is. It is. Yeah. I have gone on vacation. Nobody came down, did anything, nobody voted anything. And you got there a day before I did to look at it. Any other questions from the board? <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> Anyone wishing to speak for this petition? Anyone here wishing to speak for it? Hearing and the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak for it. Anyone wishing to speak in, in, in the opposition? Anyone in opposition? The hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in opposition. What is the wish of the board? The should be granted. Second. Yeah. I just would like to put one stipulation, which he's agreed to, and that is that he will, because it's currently not paved, that he will pave the driveway uh, back to the, the, the parking spaces that are shown on the plan. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Motion made by Mr. Calvin, seconded by Mr. Mendez to grant. Please call the roll. Uh, with the stipulation to pave the driveway back to the parking yes. space yes. on yes. the plan. Yep. yep. Mr. Mendez? Yes, Grant. Mr. Grant, Mr. DeSoto? Yes. Yes, Mr. Grant, Mr. Cole? Yes. Yes, Mr. Grant, Mr. Calvin? Yes, Mr. Grant. Yes, Mr. Grant, Mrs. Curley? Yes, Mr. Grant. Yes, Mr. Grant. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Case number 97642 Springview Drive. Petition of Glenn Johnson, allow the construction of a single story addition to a single family dwelling in an R1 single family district with less than the required side yard setback. So I hope you guys will forgive me, I don't have as much copies of all this as um, <laughs> naughty, naughty. the first time, sorry. So this is a uh, design if, uh, from the design company. Oh, I didn't see that. I have two copies of the uh, block plan, too. Look at that. With the structure. Um, yeah, that we have. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully this is what you got, right? What? We have these. Yeah. I have these two boxes. I only have two of these, so I apologize for that. So we're basically looking for about a foot and a half of relief from the setback from uh, mm -hmm. the lot to our three and right, Bob Lehman's lot. That's where the corner intercepts it. This is the addition. <clears throat> it's a one-story addition. One-story addition, yep. We're actually uh, okay. so raising some part of the structure that's yeah. already there and just building back where, where it is today. Well, adding, I'm sorry, go ahead. We're adding about 200 units. In net new square footage, we're adding about 286 feet or one floor story. This is to um, expand the house, renovate the kitchen, and build um, a more living space on the first floor. Now, this picture that you're showing us does not show that stairway that comes down from these, this sliding door here. Is right. that going to be gone? Yeah, the stairway's going. That's, that's, that's how it would be. The stairway will be going. going. Thank God. Yeah. I went, I looked at this thing here and I we said, want that oh my God, there. let me design this. It could be so much better. It's like a mishmash if you have that stairway there. Yeah, it's a long story behind that. It predates my uh, ownership of the house. So you're going to put it in the new addition, that stairway? Oh, I like the stairway. Oh, wow. uh, yeah, probably we're not going to have the stairway going up. But how about a second means of egress? From the front. From the first, from the second? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a single family house. Right. Yeah. yeah, I know, but you had, you had the stairway there before. We have it there today, yes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Are you going to take it out and say it's a little more stairway? Well, he doesn't need it. We don't, we don't need I, it. I know, but they, yeah, need, we don't, they we, needed it now. Well, we need it. I'm of the idea, I'm of the idea, if you have it there, you don't get rid of it. Yeah. 
Well, whatever, whatever what if, case may what be. What if you expanded the, that additional, put that stairway inside? It's called that, you know, it's much more safer up in the second floor if you have a, a second means of egress there. Yeah, it's definitely food for thought. We haven't really, the, the, the plan was to remove that because it's not safe as it is anyway. But you understand the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. You get rid of the safety factor, which I don't like. Yeah. Well, you're going to have a deck there, a little book deck? Yeah. Yeah. So theoretically, it's, we will have a second means. What is that? No, he's going to have a deck up there. Oh, he is? Yeah. <coughs> it's just a little balcony yeah. deck. That, you know, yeah, 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 but I mean, that's still, that's still a, you see these outside stairways are dangerous in the winter, ice and snow. I know. Yeah. Who keeps them clean? Nobody. I don't want to get rid of it. Well, I do. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying, yeah. maybe you're different. You're one hundred or something. We see these come in here all the time. They're very, they don't allow them in most cities and towns. Yeah. Big serious stairways. Uncovered. Whatever you put on this table is what you have to do. Yeah, well, that's the plan. The plan yeah. right. is laid out on the, on the survey plan. And the variance is only for the setback issue. Correct. The We're about 18 inches. Side yard setback. 18 inches into the 70 feet. Mm -hmm. And just to see if I can clarify, this floor plan that's over here, that's the floor plan of just the addition. That's the right. entire the that's floor the entire plan of the whole house. The second floor or the, the well the first floor, excuse me. The first floor, okay. The first floor. And um, is there a floor be, plan for the second floor? There, it's only a single story. Oh I see, so it's okay, I see. My name is It's a little confusing, but this is okay. the new the new addition. House is basically oh, back in here. He adds on. This is already a porch, mm -hmm. uh, an, an enclosed porch. We're going to raise that and we're just going to blow out the house to here and add on to there. Okay, so the building department, the inspectional services advised you that the side yard setback is your only issue. Other than that, you can go ahead and build. Yeah. Okay. How many square feet you have? How many square feet are we adding? Yeah. Uh, four. 430, 430. But there's already, there's already an existing structure there that we're going to take down, build over, so the net square, new square feet would be roughly 286. So if this house was built straight on this lot, instead of at an angle, you wouldn't have to come here. I wouldn't be here, no. Thank you. <laughs> you need to do yeah, that was built. No, the, the addition was it's built as it's as it's designed, it's all there gonna put in put it in. That's as far as it was gonna go, how it's laid out on that. Well why would you be opposed to that? Tell me why. Well budget reasons. I know, but safety, think of the safety. There's a stairway there now. People are used to using that. And you know you're going away with it. Well, that was a safety factor built there for some reason. Listen, the, it was there for um, uh, another point of egress a while back when someone else was living up there. They don't want to, they don't want to live there. So the so, stairs are rarely used. What do you mean, nobody lives upstairs? No, there was a, there was a previous tenant, my wife's grandmother used to live up there. But no one lives up there now? Well, no, we, we all live up there, yeah, the whole family, the bedrooms, the bathrooms are up there. Yeah. Is there a kitchen up there? No. <clears throat> yeah, but, yeah, but tell me you like to enclose that so I can hold for it. That I'd like to enclose the I'd, I'd like to see him enclose it. Yeah, it's a safety feature that you're removing from the building. Yes. I don't understand what your question is, Pat. If he already has stairs inside his house like I do and everybody here it's does. It's an extra feature of a building. They do it in a lot of places. But he doesn't have to have it. I'm not saying he has to. I'm asking what he does. Okay. Well, if I was going to add it to it, then I you just had this is not a big deal. Who drew the plans for you? 
a company called DMS Design. So, so if we granted uh, it with the provision that you could make it as feasible for this designer to include that, could you go on with that? I, I'd be fine with that. We have to rebuild the stairs. The stairs are, are not safe as it is. I, I understand. Yep. They're ancient history. I'm only saying to replace that where it's a, an extra feature. All right, I'm, I'm just offering you so, so I can vote for it. Yeah, okay. And I'm fine with that. Go back to the designer and ask him, and you may see it isn't as much as you think. Okay. And then it gives you a little more room in there. I'm sorry? It gives you a little more room in the house. Yeah, yeah, in another way. Yes, yeah. yeah, so agreed. Yeah. No, no, no. Yes. So now you're going to put these stairs back? Well, they're there already, so we, I know. we take them down and, and, and build them back. That's ugly. <coughs> I know what he's saying, but it, it's it's certainly not to cold. It's just to do. Yep. So there's another mean of egress. In other words, my house could catch on fire tomorrow. I'm in real big trouble because I don't have another stairs that goes to the outside. I, I personally don't like it, but... Whatever. Anyone else? Any any other questions on the board? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone in opposition? Anyone in opposition? What is the wish of the board? Will the petition be granted with the stipulation that the that the uh, gentleman look into the. Uh, Get a, get a hold of your designer and see if he can squeak that in there that, that, and close that stairway, that extra feature you have, which is good for the house. <clears throat> is so, that so, let me, so let me ask, let me just Does clarify. Does there really need to be a stipulation on the design? Hold on, before, before we go, you're just asking him to, to visit it with the designer. You're yeah. not requesting that he absolutely unequivocally leaves the stair there. You're just asking to see if he can make the design amenable to keeping or replacing the rotten staircase. Oh, no, no, no. oh, you mean to enclose the stairway? To include it, to keep it included. You're asking to get with the designer and see. Yeah. Could it but, possibly be worked out in, in, a, in a feasible, yes. aesthetical manner yep. to have it done? Not, yes. And if it can't, then. And that's good. So be it. Okay. Yeah. Right. He, does, he doesn't have to do so it. No stipulation. He's just asking him to just. Yeah, you're requesting it, but he doesn't have to do it. Correct. Is that correct? It's just what I said. I, mean, I know. I just want to make sure yeah. I have a vote. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a stipulation. You're just requesting no. to look right. into that. So it's not a stipulation. Yeah. You're not required. Okay. I second the motion. <laughs> motion made to grant by Mr. Callan, seconded by Mr. Mendez. Please call the roll. Mr. Mendez. Yes to grant. Yes to grant. Mr. DeSono. Yes to grant. Yes to grant. Mr. Cole. Yes. Yes to grant. Mr. Yes to grant. Yes to grant. Mr. Curley. Yes to grant. Mr. Grant. Good luck. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Case number nine seven six five two sixty five Broadway. Petitioner Patrick DeBolmere, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong, by the Trinity Samuel Vitale, allow accessory temporary structures with less than the required side yard on a lot with pre existing non conforming restrooms with required parking provided on and off site in an R1 single family district. I'm Attorney Vitale, this is Patrick. Um, you're about the third board that we've been in front of, and let me tell you how we all came to be here. Um, Marilyn Packer Clinton family owned the Four Winds for many, many years. And then her <coughs> parents passed on, she became the executrix, and then ultimately, in 2011, she sold the property uh, to Patrick. Uh, as you know, it's bounded on one side by a small park, which is city-owned, and in fact, part of the building sits on the city-owned land with an easement from the city of Lynn. Uh, at the rear is the pond. Uh, it's been that way for years. 
uh, Patrick came along and took what had been in a neighborhood facility and a smaller one and uh, made many improvements uh, and, and had some success. Uh, one of the long-standing issues was what was the occupancy? What's the capacity? Because uh, Maryland had gotten permission uh, to serve uh, not only food but alcoholic beverages in an outdoor deck area. And um, that was the condition that he got. He then uh, made some improvements, uh, built up the business, and uh, more people wanted to uh, enjoy the food and the service. And one of the questions was in determining what's the occupancy of this outdoor space. So before anybody really made inquiry, Patrick had begun. We had gone to the Conservation Commission. Uh, he had commissioned an architect who did this plan, um, which I'm going to unfold, but I have copies for each of you. Uh, and the architect used one of several formulas, and, and I'm somewhat familiar with this because I do represent other restaurants, and determining capacity of a restaurant, and that's another question for you, which is unique, I think, it seems to me, because one of the things we are going to ask you to say, that this is a restaurant and not a nightclub, and, and I'll come back to the significance of that in a minute. But in determining when you have outdoor capacity and indoor capacity, um, the building code looks at certain formulas. One is square footage, which people understand. There's a formula if you stand at a bar, versus if you see it at a table of four. Uh, that's one method. You take the square footage, you take the formula from the building code, and you divide, and the steel goes into it. You get so many at the bar and so many at tables. But nobody ever made a number for the outside, OK? Um, another method that is used is how many entrances and egresses do you have? So if you have more entrances and egresses, that will allow you to have greater capacity. And then there's another one, and it seems that ISD is really stuck on this one, uh, and that's bathrooms. And they ascribe to bathrooms uh, for a men's room 30, and depending on the facilities uh, of a, a women's room, it could be 60. But typically the building department, unless you have uh, either handicapped accessible or you have two toilets in the ladies' room, they ascribe 30 and 30 is 60. So if you use that rule, you went with me tonight. The 14 establishments, 15, 60, you name it, they all should have a capacity of 60, but they don't. And in fact, at one point, Patrick had uh, a certificate that said, well, there's so many inside and so many outside. And when we began to look at that, uh, you know, we questioned because uh, the other thing the building code does, it has use classifications. So if you are a restaurant, you're in one use classification. If you're a nightclub, now, so this is Mrs. Parker's last license, uh, and you'll see that I circled the word restaurant. She was a restaurant. <clears throat> I think that was in 2001. In 2014, the building department issued this certificate which was clearly not the case. It said that it was a total capacity of 48, but if you add it up, it's 12 plus 36 plus 40 outside. So the real question became, what is the occupancy and the capacity at the four winds? And so when Patrick uh, had the architect uh, do the plan, which I gave you the smaller one, of which this is the larger version. You can see that he has at the bottom of his plan some of the formulas. He comes up with a number of 106. Now, this isn't the only place in the city of Lindo, the only place in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts where there are outdoor eating and dining facilities. And the state fire marshal, uh, back in 2012, and others issued this interpretation to assist building uh, departments and how do you arrive at the number. Now, one of the things that they talked about is, well, you're going to look and see, is the outside attached to the inside by means of passage? So we 
followed this, the architect followed this, and what we came up with is a number that was certainly greater. And in fact, the building department said you're right. And they went to 60, but they used the 30 and the 30. But we said, well, what about the outside? And we've been trying to get them to give us a number for the outside. Well, this all came to a head recently, this summer. Uh, <clears throat> and part of it is the success of, of the Four Winds. Um, it's been featured on three regional TV food shows. Uh, if you've been there, you've seen uh, Melissa McCarthy, who's the uh, television star, of Mike and Molly's and the movies in Boston. She and her gal pal showed up one Saturday afternoon at the Four Winds because she had read about it on Yelp. And we believed, and I think you would believe, based on the, and this is the name, that it is in fact a restaurant. Well, what happened was, uh, Mr. Dunneman uh, wrote a letter in July saying, and this is the second issue we need you to decide, what's the required parking? Well, the required parking for a restaurant is one space for each four seats, but it's different for a night or a disco. What is this all really about? This is all well-intentioned, given a tragic event that happened in Rhode Island several years ago, the so-called station nightclub fire. From that came a change in the Massachusetts law with respect to the requirements for sprinklers. If you were under 100 in capacity, you didn't have to have a sprinkler. If you were over, you had a period of time, because <coughs> didn't have sprinkles and they gave them a period of time. But if you get cited for a violation for overcrowding, they could find you $10,000 and they could compel you to put in sprinkles. And so this number of occupancy became very, very important. Um, the then fire chief in 2004, he put out a questionnaire. And, and the current fire chief is very familiar with it. But they add things, if you remember, about the station I talk about. Do you use pyrotechnics? Do you have fireproof seats? A variety of things. But clearly, the station nightclub was a nightclub based on live entertainment, pyrotechnics, a variety of things. So the statute under which sprinklers are mandatory specifically excludes restaurants. It says, this shall not apply to a restaurant. <laughs> So one of the questions is, are you a restaurant or are you not? And the fire department uses a certain criteria to determine it. This summer, the people from the SIU, that's the Special Investigations Unit of the Lynn Police, went in on a particular weekend, there were people seated outside, maybe 70, uh, and there were people seated inside, 37. And they added up 37 and 70, and they got to 107, and they went inside and they said, the certificate says 60, you're overcrowded. And that began this whole exercise. But prior to that, we had engaged saying, use what the State Building Code Bureau of Standards says and give us a number for the outside. <laughs> That's our total capacity. Since then, we've been engaged with the uh, building department, the fire department, uh, the licensing board all in an attempt to arrive at a number. And so we sort of gave up. We don't agree with them, but we're gonna do what they want. And what they want is essentially this. They want another bathroom. Because they said, 30, 30, 60, yeah, another, you get to 90, okay? When this all occurred, we appealed to the fire chief because it took me about two years to, uh, explain to the building department that it is not the building department commissioner, but it is the fire chief who makes this determination. And so, and it's not the state building code board of appeals where you go if you agree, it's the automatic sprinkle board. Well, they did it right. For whatever reason, when Patrick got cited, they absolutely, for the first time, did it right. And I feel responsible that I taught them how to do it right, okay? So they did it right, they gave a fair trial, and they penalized it. And what this is about, and think about it, is putting sprinklers in an outdoor area. 
This is about paying a $10,000 fine for first offense. We've appealed that, but comment minds have uh, taken over. And so we were told, if you do the following, this can all go away. And what that requires is somebody to make a decision, and as often it is, you're it. So these are the three decisions you need to make. Is the Four Winds a restaurant? Because that affects the pot paper. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> the Four Winds has never had a front setback, <clears throat> never had a right sideline because of the park. In fact, the building is on city-owned land. Never had a rear yard requirement because of the pond. Okay? Uh, it does have a right sideline. And that was one of the things that concerned the building about. Patrick, and being a good neighbor, put up a barrier to baffle sound to stop smoke so his abutter on that side wouldn't get the effects of the people who are outside. They say putting that barrier up, okay, and the fact that there was always a shed there, which is an accessory structure, and there's a cooler there, they count that as structures. Well, accessory structures can't be in the side, which is seven and a half feet. And they, these are. And they could be if they were three feet, but they're not three feet. So to the right sideline, the building department says there is a violation, and that's one of the things we're coming to, to vary. And we say to you that those aren't permanent structures. He didn't increase the size of the building. There's a cooler and a shape. So that's a dimensional regulation. So there are really three things. The characterization of what it is which affects the packing requirement. And then the second is this dimensional issue. And then with respect to packing, we say it's been the same business as it always has been. But again, before anybody made an inquiry, we ended in an arrangement with the Julio Insurance across the street to park in the evenings, to get additional parking. So we want you to bless <clears throat> the current parking arrangement, which is some on site and some off site. So when this became an issue, we wrote a letter to the fire chief. And the fire chief uh, exercised his authority, but he's a man who knows what he's doing. He didn't make a fiat, but we understand that he said we could have a greater capacity, but he wanted us to satisfy the uh, request of the building department. So ultimately, the guy who decides what the total capacity is going to be is the fire chief. And he was all for, why don't you just put in the other bathroom? And everybody said, why don't you just put in the other bathroom? And so we looked at all of these places, and do we want to go to Stone, Massachusetts, to the automatic sprinkler appeals you? Uh, do we want to go across the street to the Lynn District Court and challenge the $10,000 fine? All we want to do is keep doing what we're doing, which is run a successful business, to the point where, again, before any of this was an issue, the mayor wrote a letter to the city clerk saying, hey, this is a great business in the city of Lynn, and what can we do to help them out? And we know there's some issue that relates to capacity. So we've been working with the various people in the city to try to resolve it. And you're sort of a stop along the way. And how can you help us resolve it? You can help us resolve it by saying, first of all, that the Four Winds is not a discotheque or a nightclub. It's a restaurant. If you do that, we now have a parking room. Secondly, you can recognize that it's been there for many, many years. And with respect to that, um, any additional parking we get, we don't think we are required to have. We just got it because it made sense in terms of building the business. So I brought copies of the lease that, again, long before any of this was an issue, was in an into with uh, Diva Giulio and Anne Marie Jones. Um, so, we need you to approve three things. You say it is a restaurant, 
it was there pre-existing non-conforming, didn't have a uh, front setback, a rear yard requirement, or a left sideline, but you're gonna give us a variance because we acknowledge and admit that the cooler and the shed are within the sideline on the right. And for that, we want you to give us permission. And then lastly, <clears throat> you're gonna recognize that we have a parking arrangement that we say gives us more spaces than we're required to have, and we have on-site parking. So what has happened is the, the business succeeded. Uh, it's done well. Uh, many people are patrons, but it is unusual in this regard. People don't sit out there in December and watch the Patriots games and the packing lot of the, the four winds. But in the summertime, there are many people who do sit outside. They look at the pond uh, and they enjoy it. Uh, and uh, to accommodate them, Patrick put up an awning, he provided some shelter. But in terms of building a permanent larger structure, that somehow violates the dimensional requirements, that he did not do. So this is the large drawing, and you can see back in 2015, in February of 2015, long before this became an issue, the architect said, I think it's 106. We submitted this to the building department. We submitted that memorandum from the Bureau of Standards that said how you measure and get a number for the outdoors. We asked the fire chief, who we think is the authority to give us the number for the outdoor area. And I understand we're gonna, we would get a greater number, but what really got us here was a, a weekend night in which the police came in, counted 37 people inside, 70 outside, looked at the certificate, which had been bumped up from 48 to 60 under the 30 plus 30 rule, and said you're over 60. And the statute says that if you have a violation, there's a formula that uses one and a half times, okay? So if you, we, we were just over enough to get the good news of pay $10,000 and install a sprinkler. We can't install a sprinkler on the outside. And so we appealed that, but that's not your problem, okay? And, and we dealt with the licensing issue. We took our medicine there, okay? And, um, and they treated Patrick uh, favorably. And I think the city is trying to do two things, and you could assist us. One is life safety. Everybody's on the same page when it comes to life safety. No one wants to put anybody in the kind of situation <clears throat> that was the station nightclub flag. But the four winds and Lynn is not the station nightclub. Okay. And the second is, in terms of uh, encouraging a local business, I would say that this, the agencies, the Inspectional Services, the Fire Department, they're working with us, and we're working with them. But one of the things they required of us was to get somebody's approval, and the real approval we need is for that right sideline, and for this parking arrangement that we have. And that's what we're going to see. Somebody did read this this morning, didn't they, Sam? Mm -hmm. you, were, you definitely were on your game tonight. Huh? What is the magic number? That they're giving you a number or you're waiting for this to get no. a number? We, we have to go through this series of steps. To get but, but, the, but, but we've been told, okay, that on the plan that Denny McManus did that shows where the uh, porta party is, that if we put a, uh, a uh, bathroom facility there, there is a... Uh, a rule that says under the architectural barriers law that if you have a unisex bathroom, it satisfies uh, the ADA requirements, okay? And then we know we're gonna get at least another 30, okay? So the building department would probably give us 90, but we've been told informally that when the police, when the fire chief looked at this, he thought we could go as high as 122. We just want a number that's greater than 60. And uh, if they gave us 90, we would give 90. And in fact, um, from the moment that this has happened, we've had people counting and turning people away to keep it at the requisite number and to abide by what they said, even though we might disagree with it. I've seen it. I believe. I've seen it. I've, it. I've been turned away. Um, so really, you're here for the side yard setback. 
to be to be perfectly honest, that's yeah, what, right, that's because that's from our perspective, that's the the one thing I would agree with them on. But I'm explaining to you how it came to be, okay? And and that's why in the wording of what I did, I call, I call it a temporary accessory structure because uh, the shed had always been the uh, the cool. Uh, those are accessory to the to the restaurant. I, I don't disagree with you, Sam. And I mean, as far as the parking goes, the parking's always been that way. You know, the parking up there's always been that way. We've always had the same issue. I mean, a lot of things have, have come before us that, that have had those same issues. I, I mean, I don't really see you really changing too much here from what you, you've been doing. Yeah, I mean, so I know what you do down there. It's more of a restaurant now than it ever has. Yeah, so, Mr. Brett, I agree with you about what the fire chief says. I don't think he is the guy who voted. He definitely is. Whatever he says, if you don't put the stamp of the fire, the fire department on that, you're in trouble. So you would, in other words, go with the number that he said? Is that what you're saying? Well, what we did is, when they gave us this violation, it said right in the notice of yeah. violation, which you hadn't said in the past, and I had called them the task on that you could appeal to the fire chief. So we appeal to the fire chief. The fire chief should be in the diplomatic service because he didn't just say, okay, it's my decision and that's my rule. He went and met with Mr. Donovan and others and said, I think when you use this indicia, this is a restaurant, and when you use this indicia, the number is clearly greater than what it's been, but I will not do that until you tell me what you want. And they said, we want another bathroom. Okay, that's, that's gonna happen anyway, right? There's no two ways about it. Right, Mr. Beckley? That, that's gonna happen. You're gonna put so, a, a suitable other bathroom in there. Right. right. So, that, so we work so on working with them with, with Africa in that regard. Yeah. So, so you said there's three zoning violations there. And one is to, that this board should approve it as a restaurant, I like to approve it as a great restaurant, which it is. Mm -hmm. I like to get a little better word in there, but he, well, it's he, a restaurant, and, and I agree with that. And the other thing is the, the uh, sideline there. Uh, on the right side. Yeah, on, on the right side. That's when they, and the original bill was there over 100 years ago. But they just kept adding every 10 years. Since I've been around, I, you know, you look around, there's another little piece on there. This is going back years and years ago. But it's there. He's done a great job on, on bringing it around. So, so, that, so it's the, it's the toilet room, and then what else? The, the, well, see, if we, well, the if we get your approval, on the okay. now Mr. Dunnigan's gonna be happy that we address the zoning things that he sent to us in a letter that said must be addressed, yeah. okay? In fact, they gave us a deadline uh, October 1, but given the schedule, we're here on October the 4th, okay? But they know we've been working towards resolving this, yeah. okay? So if we get this approval, the last step for us is to get the building permit to build with a uh, temporary bathroom yeah. is to build a permit. Yeah, which is that shaded area, is it? Yeah, it's, it's going to be in the same exact area. And there were issues there that are building code issues, like did we need to be able to enter it from the inside? And they said no. Okay, and then whether what would be the side? There's a slab. Have you seen the slab that's there? Yeah. Could we put it on the slab? They said yes. So they've been working with us. Yeah. They're not making us, you know, stand on our head to achieve. Yeah, it. yeah. And and, and uh, You're on your head right now. The petitioner is trying to get along with them. Yes. And, right. We've been trying to do that since yeah. he took and it over. Yeah. So now you get the three. Could you? Repeat them again, and, and you know. For the characterization of this business as a restaurant is right 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 because that then affects what the parking formula, which we disagreed with them on, which they were applying a quote nightclub. And I'll tell you, I learned something. If you look at the parking ordinance in nine point three, and you go down the line, I always thought it was once before, but then it says or .50, and the .50 is it says restaurant slash nightclub. So if you read that the way it is, if you're a nightclub, then it's not one to four, okay? Yeah, now Mr. Vitale, does the new parking lot, the city built, help? It's oh, yeah. right. they, they did so that in recognition of what's that. going on in Wyoming Square. You right. could use that. Right, correct. Without a letter or anything. Right. But prior to all of that, prior to the city doing that, we had entered into an arrangement 
place across the street. Yes, I know. To get added on. Yeah, which is so, so we wanted to bring that to your attention. Yes. That has, that's how we had addressed uh, the parking. But I agree with them that there's a right side line violation, but I'm trying to explain to you how it came about. And really it came about because of what they say is you intruded on the side line. But the intrusion on the side line was in recognition that when people come outside, there's noise. When people come outside, they smoke. And we were trying to benefit, actually, the adjoining property by protecting them from some of those items. And the recognition that there were those two structures that had always been there. Any other questions from the board? Uh, just, just a little bit about parking. Um, how many spaces are there on site? There are several. It's always been the same number. I'd say there's not more than six on so, site. And how many are available across the street at the? Twenty. Yeah. Twenty. Seven. Oh, so because even with your 106, isn't it one space per four seats? Well, but that was one of the questions. Whether okay. that's what it is if you're a restaurant. Oh, well, in, and, but see, the other issue well, is this, that there's no parking requirement. Since yeah. this place has been there long before 1964 when there's ever any parking requirement. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and so what we wanted to show that we had made an effort to address parking before anybody even came to us. But even if you go with the 106, you're still over the requirement. Correct. If we include the across Correct. the street arrangement. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone else in favor? No, okay. Well, well, you'll, have get there you'll have your chance to come up. <laughs> <clears throat> hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Oh, just a minute. Dear Chairperson, I respectfully request your honorable body to grant the above mentioned petition to allow accessory temporary structures with less than the required side yard on a lot of pre-existing non-conforming restaurant with required parking provided on and off-site in an R1 single-family district. Thank you in advance for your attention to this matter. Wayne Losey, Council of Ward 1. Now, could you give your name and address? Uh, Robert Patton, 257, 259 Broadway. And what else? I'm on the right side, okay? and. Uh, I think I know how long those buildings have been up, but I was in Florida and I never received any uh, notice that it was even up. And when I came back from Florida, it was already up. So I looked at it and I said, Look at it. And it is a restaurant, I agree with that. But when I got this, I thought that it was just that deal. But now he wants to come out into the parking lot, okay, with another restaurant. I mean, uh, Lavatory, whatever you want to call it, which is going to take out more parking in his space, which is already way too tight. So I don't think. I think it only holds about four or five cars. So, anyway. Um, See right here? This little thing right here is the, is the, the toilet that he wants to put up. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the parking over here. Nobody parks over here. This is where the parking is mm -hmm. in has. Mm -hmm. And if you go over there, you'll see that it's right there right now. Right. Okay. That's a quarter party. Yeah. Okay. Which is coming out from the building, which is going to take up more space. Um, it's I would sort of, it's like sort of next to, to this particular piece right here. It's this little yes, piece here I that's coming out. No, I'm just showing you, yeah, just okay. making sure you understand. Okay. Well, at the point when I came back from Florida, if you see by the pictures of it, I mean, they're right up against my property right hand side and I don't know I've been to the building department to find out what the law is as far as how much he can come to my property line and uh, I never got an answer somebody uh, was supposed to come from the building department to look over what's been done here and uh, nobody ever got back yeah. So, well, the board does have it on the plan, the violations. Right. And then that's what we should say. That's what, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. here against. You know yeah. what I mean? Because if, if you look at that, I got to get, I got to go and get some surveyor to come in and check because I'm pretty sure that those buildings are at least right on my line. If not. Is that your chain link fence? Yes. Well, I believe it was. It actually 
Well, the fence actually sits on my side of the property. I was just going to say, according to the survey, yeah, the fence the, see, the, 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 the wooden fence is mine. Okay, and uh, like I said, if you look at look, that's those pictures here. You got a shed over here, Bob, right? Some kind of shed. That's, that's been there for years. Yes. Since I, I haven't. Whoever put that up there's got the same probably sort of violation <laughs> on this side of it. Good a bit. Good yeah. a bit. I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'd knock it down anyways. So it's just. It's, it's, so, so, what is the, the dimension on the side yard is what? Should, on an accessory use? When you have a business, whether it's in a residential district or business, any yeah, business I, I in just, any district, um, okay. Footnote 10 to the dimensional regulations table, it says you need to have a front setback of 10, yeah. a rear yard of 15, and on either side, 7.5. The building never had a front setback of anything. Uh, it never had a, uh, a left side line because, in fact, it's on city land. There is no requirement because there's another footnote that says if you would buy a public land or a pond or a park, there's no rear yard requirement. So it's seven and a half feet is the side line of the corner. Section six point something says that an accessory structure that's detached uh, can be within three feet. So we think we violated the shed and the uh, cooler uh, because we think they're both within three feet and within the seven and a half feet. And we also think that part of what Mr. Dunham's concern was is we would put along the side of the structure, we put things to baffle the sound and block the noise and uh, stop uh, smoke, that putting that out uh, in the sideline was what we think is a violation that the building department was unhappy about. So we don't want to take it down because we think it benefits the developer, but uh, we want to get permission for the shed and the cooler. Uh, that have been there, the shed's been there for many, many years. Uh, and so we think that's the only dimensional uh, violation. Uh, and it says uh, seven and a half feet uh, to a building on or off the property. Well, I think the shed was just put up uh, not too long ago, maybe within two years or something like that, three years. <laughs> the cooler was put up about three years, four years ago. In fact, it was a much smaller cooler, and then it got enlarged. They just came in one day and enlarged it. And this, what I'm saying now is they come out and they smoke and stuff, and then I find the butts, and, you know, over my ass. The more he takes up outside, they come, well, the space is right here. There's where they hide, and they maybe bring out a bottle or whatever. I don't know how, but I found bottles over there. But they're not even concerned about that. But it's, it's just keeps taking away from, I've lost my view of the pond since this all took place, you know. I used to have, be able to see across the pond. I can't see across the pond anymore. So I just wonder how far it's gonna keep going. You know, every time I come back from Florida, I see something else up there, so. Well, actually, what we're approving is uh, the temporary, Allow accessory temporary structures. So at some point down the road, there's going to be a new plan that's going to possibly come in that would, would and if it doesn't meet zoning, would come back here. But most likely, they will attempt to meet all zoning requirements. So this, what what, what we're approving is a, is a temporary, technically a temporary situation. Right. Let right. it stay as it is, so we can get his licenses and whatnot. Eventually, it, it's he's got a, another plan that's going to. Basically, hopefully, address all these issues. I mean, that's the way I'm reading this thing. And this, yeah. this one, this one, and I, I did ask the attorney on this. The way, you, the way that your appeal is written will cover everything that you need. Yes. Because it talks about temporary structures, required side yard setback, uh, non-conforming restaurant with parking provided on and off site. So. That, that would that this here would would grant the temporary relief that you guys are looking for on the structures and then the other things. Which will solve our problem with the requirement to put sprinklers in an outdoor facility and pay ten thousand dollars. So there are three yeah. main three okay. main look. I, I mean, we have a I heard about this, and so I didn't know anything about it, but I will get somebody in to survey my property sure. to make sure that. Yeah, because it looks like based on this. This is there. That's not. 
Uh, it just looks like the fence is on, uh, is on the, more on more on his property. Yes, yeah, look like it's right on that, the line. If yeah. you look at some of the pictures there that I took, and it's you know the fence yeah. was taken down, that was on the line, and now the fence is down and it's never been put up. But I see portion. you have to understand that that line is not your line. It belongs to the two of you. Mm -hmm. That line is there, mm -hmm. and the registered land surveyors who went there, they have to put that down with a point teller. So that becomes his line and your line. Okay. You can't say it's next to my line, it's next to the line. Okay. But okay. what, how far does the structure? Yeah, someone might say, well, that fence is where the line is. That doesn't work. So I line. can go right up to people's property, you mean? And Twice here. Hmm? Twice here. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's that's the, yeah. You asked the questions, not answer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't, you know, the structure's been put up, and uh, yeah. I just want to yeah, see like what's Mr. going yeah, on. Like Mr. Uh, Cole said it's temporary. They're asked for a temporary relief. Everything here is just relief. temporary. Well, they're saying temporary. I don't. Yeah. Well, well, what's wrong with that? It mm -hmm. probably is. It's been there, and, and, and yeah. trust me, it, it helps. It's just. The more they take up, like we the dumpsters there now. We plant that all the time. The great like great. As he as he progresses, he does more, yeah. fixing up, and he makes it look better. Mm -hmm. He's never going to stop doing that. Right. So I just uh, don't. No, I understand. You, know, you, you reach a point where it's getting too big for the site. Is what you're concerned about. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, right. Right. I got no problem with that. No. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Yes, a little bit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to submit these as? Huh? Do you, are you submitting these as? No, not really. Okay. Just, I, I told them just right. to prove that. Are you in the butter? You know. I It's just a little bit. What's your name and address? Jeffrey Eric Yard, 500 ESSIX Street, Park Number 16, the Massachusetts, and also appointed the roving counselor by the Yard Lindsay Council. Okay. And the license board. So this, this is really a compliment to attorney Natalia, even though it's a little bit in opposition. It sounded to me like he was speaking this is a compliment to him, that he still isn't able to get, you know, fully what he had asked for as far as it sounded like there were several areas of discontent. So it's a, when I say that I'm opposing, I want to see the board approve something. It isn't fully approved the way Attorney Vitale has addressed it. And I would never go um, figuratively over his head, but literally, you know, over someone's head. So thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. I'm just saying to wear Mr. Vitale <clears throat> like that about, you know, something he's discussing. I mean, they've never even mentioned anything about sidewalks and all those things. What, what would I go to if I wanted to assist? a little bit more about. All right, Jeffrey, I, I understand, and thank you very much for your comments. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak I'm, in opposition? I'm concerned about I understand, Jeffrey. Over someone's head, and sidewalk, clearance, and all that. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? And Jeffrey, I know, thank I'd you. I'd just like to see you able to get a full I understand. Oh, we have to yeah, hear everybody this evening. This is Chairman, if a motion is an order, Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Come up and give your name and address, please. Good evening. I'm in Paul Haywood, you know, 10 Wellington Street, which is right on the corner. Um, so you may be your other talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I don't know if I'm considered no butter or not. Did you get no, did you get a notice? I never got any notices about any change. Yeah, you did. Not in the bottom. Yeah. Is it like 300 feet? But you can talk. Is it 300 feet? I don't know. If you no, you're on the list. Mr. Haywood? Yeah. 10 Wyoming Street. Mm -hmm. Yep. Never received any request. Sorry. Okay. So sorry. Well, things have been changing for quite a few years now. Okay, I was really um, curious about the um, sentence that says, allow accessory temporary structures. It sounds very confusing to me. You want to take a look at it? Um, sure. They're the existing structures that are, that are at the rear of the, on the side of the property. It's, it's nothing new, it's what's there now. Yeah, 
I just am concerned about that sentence. Allow it to allow accessory. Yeah, right there. Those are them. Oh, those are those little buildings yeah. there. Yeah, well, yeah, they're, they're, not used, they're, they're not used as part of the restaurant. They're accessory trucks and they store stuff in them. They're used yeah. for, for cold products. They're used for trash. They're used for dry storage. They're not, there's not ever going to be tables and chairs in there. Yeah. And people sitting in there eating and drinking. And that, that's what the accessory used to be. The temporary means yeah. it's not forever. Yeah. No, and Mrs. Chairman, I think that the word to describe it better the temporary structures are up on blocks, aren't they? They don't have a foundation or anything, right? So they're temporary. Yeah, it's not a building, it's right. just yeah. a, yeah. So it's a it's shed that's sitting on top of the ground. So it's this patent shed, which you want him to tear down. I didn't know what asked him to tear that down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he said he wanted to tear it down. Right, but nobody here on no, the board asked him to tear down. No, there is a difference between the permanent structure and what it's up on blocks, right? So, okay. Just have a lot of questions here. <clears throat> um, not really sure if I'm in favor or you know, against, but the um, question was, is the restaurant expanding? It's not, right? No. OK. And um, is the use of the parking lot expanding? No. OK. Um, so there's no um, expansion to the restaurant itself. Uh, no. In front of the board now, no? Okay. So it is a zoned residential within a working business area, right? It's a non-conforming use. Yes, right. non yes. Non allows non-conforming use. What is R1? Use. That's residential. Okay. 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 Um, also curious about the term side yard. It really is the parking lot, right? That's what we're really yeah, the side yard is where those buildings are on that plot plan I gave you. Okay. The temporary buildings. Right along here. Yeah. Okay, so isn't the side yard the parking lot? Parking lot? The side yard yeah. is everything to the side of the building. Right. Towards Mr. Pattinsburg. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, so that's a difference of opinion there. Um, there really is a problem with parking. It is a residential parking on William Street. There's always parking on there besides Steve Joyos or the parking lot, which is what uh, Chase and Two restaurant parties. Um, you know, you have schools in the area. Um, coming in and out of William Street is a real problem because there's parked cars there in a residential area. And trying to get in and out of that street is ridiculous. You feel like you're going to get pulled out and you get a side zone. Are you trying to come in? I'm 66, I've lived there all my life. Didn't have this problem when there's a lot of people didn't live in people. I could pull in and out of there, you know, with these any time. Um, so you're packing on why am I think you're packing on Broadway. So that really makes it very congested here. As I said, there's a couple of schools. You mentioned trash and stuff. I can go out in front of my house and get nips and beer cans and bottles. They're not coming from the restaurant, which was a problem with Merrill Park owned it. It was established at that point. You know, even on Wyoming Street, it's like a shortcut pass got through down there. There's kids, it's, it's sort of traffic um, um, happened in a sense. It's um, during um, rush hour, evening hours like that, and also during school when they're getting out at 2 3 o'clock, a lot of parked cars. And again, it's just congested. You know, people are parking in my house for a few minutes just to pick up their kids, but with the people parking at the end of the street where it does seem no parking, do they just, it just makes it really, really dangerous and difficult to get in and out. Um, noise is a big problem. Maybe I just should speak to the owner and not necessarily bring all these other things to the board. Um, I'm not sure if I wear this with water, the sound carries over. If someone's having a party on the other street, the other side of the pond, I should say, it's probably not any noise in the other restaurant. Not that they have parties every day, let's say Fourth of July. Um, if the boat goes by, I can tell you everything they said. It just carries. You don't have the motor in the boat. Uh, but, you know, the restaurant can get noisy. Um, I know one Sunday they were playing music, it was a little loud. I liked it, actually, it was Beatles music. But I know another neighbor was concerned and I called. Excuse me, I'll be trying. Um, 
you know, if there's a game, sporting games, so they're all cheering and yelling, which is expected, but it does get loud. Um, I don't know, we have a lot more questions since we had, you know, we still have to return to Calvary Street. But those are just some of my concerns, you know, uh, as a neighbor. Um, you know, there's a lot of businesses in here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, and just trying to maintain my part of the neighborhood, which I've been doing, we've had concerns with Manos, which we resolved. Uh, I think the whole city had concerns with Richdale when they tried to get in. 24 hour gas. And that's, you know, that's the residential area right there. Um, I have had problems with before with in the past. I've been here with a zoning board with uh, issues, and they had lawyers, and it's all that. Um, you know, I, I, everything is the same. It's not everything is the same. It was a little bar. People would stop in on their way home from the GE. They'd stop in as they were fishermen. You know, it was mostly men, no women, just saying. And, um, you know, they had to change it from a bar to a restaurant, so they claimed that they had a stove and a kitchen, which really wasn't a restaurant, you know, it was just certain use. Um, you know, there's just been a lot of changes. So I hope you really look at some of these issues. <coughs> you can know, talk to the owner and talk about some of the issues that might mark us during the board. All right, thank you, Guitar. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those who wish to speak in opposition. What is the wish of the board? Motion approved. Uh, second. <coughs> and, and I'd like to include, with uh, your permission, the three main points that Mr. Vitalia uh, said. The rest were not a nightclub. Yeah. The right side yard and the parking. Yeah. Like I said, it's all in the. Uh, it's all in there. It's all in there. Yeah, it's all in there. It's all in the petition. Well, yeah. All right. Motion made by Mr. Callan, seconded by Mr. Uh, DeSorno. I mean, what? He made the motion. Oh, I'm I sorry. Second. Second. <laughs> motion made by Mr. DeSorno and seconded by Mr. Callan. Yes. <clears throat> Janet's got it all under control. <laughs> hmm? Please call the roll. Mr. Mendez? Yes to Grant. Yes to Grant. Mr. Gisono? Yes to Grant. Yes to Grant. Mr. Cole? Yes. Yes to Grant. Mr. Callan? Yes to Grant. Yes to Grant. Mrs. Curley? Yes to Grant. Yes to Grant. Thank you very much. Case number 976641, Roland Avenue. Petition to John Connor by his attorney, Samuel Vitale. Allow the construction of a single family dwelling on a lot in the R2 general residence. Uh, quiet, please. In the R2 general residence district with less than the required lot size and frontage with driveway parking three feet from the property, from the property line. I'm attorney Vitale, and this is uh, John Connor, who is racist with his weapon. Um, Mr. Connor is well known, uh, has developed many properties in the city of Lynn, uh, for those buildings that I call this here. Uh, 41 Marlin Street had a home on a single family for many, many years. And it became in such a nuisance in the neighborhood that the city council ordered and, in fact, ultimately demolished the single family that was there. Now, what hasn't changed since this plan was recorded a long time ago um, is the size of the lot, 1907. So this is what was there before there was zoning in land. This is the subdivision plan that's on record at the registry. So the lot's never going to get any bigger. It's never going to get any smaller. It's going to be of less than 10,000 square feet because what happened is the city went from 4,000 to 7,000 to 10,000, but the lot never changed. That's why it's pre-existing non-conforming lot. If it had 5,000 square feet and 50 feet of frontage, we wouldn't be here because it would be up by right to have a single or a two-family. And by the way, this is an R2 district in which two families are from. All Mr. Connell wants to do is to build a home that was better than what was there, obviously, since it was so bad they demolished it. And what was there, didn't conform to the other dimensional requirements. But we had to make a decision, as we often do, Mrs. Curley, uh, with respect to parking and landscaping. And so 
Ultimately, with Mr. Carlin's assent, Mr. Reed's assistance, what we did is this. We made the decision to park the vehicles uh, in the driveway, but without the five-foot buffer, nearly three. And the reason we did that is it gave them an entire rear yard, backyard, in which we could have green space and people could uh, rec recreate and have uh, the use of the rear of the property. So this home, unlike the one that was there that got torn down because it was a public nuisance, has more than a 10-foot setback, has more than a 15-foot rear yard, does in fact have a seven and a half foot sideline, does in fact have two parking spaces. The only lead we need other than the lot size and frontage, which is never gonna change, because that's the lot that's on record, uh, was we decided to put the vehicles in the driveway as opposed to the rear because we thought it gave us more green space at the back. So we want to replace a home that was torn down as a public nuisance with a brand new dwelling, uh, which conforms in more ways than the home that was there to the dimensional regulations, meets the current parking requirement, and we think would be a benefit to the neighborhood that had to endure for many years a property that fell into such disrepair that the city decided to tear it down. John wants to make an investment and build a new home there. It's a single family use, which is the least intensive use, and we would hope that you would approve his request. Sam, I, I got a question. Look, when you're looking at, looking at the lot from Rollin Avenue, um, where you have the parking on the right-hand side, isn't the house on that side close to the, close to the property line? Okay. You, am I right on that? Yes. Okay, and the house on 37, is it 37? Oh. 40, okay, and your driveway's on that side. My driveway's on. It's on the right-hand side of your house. Okay. We're gonna have 45 feet in front of you. When you do the math, and you have seven and a half and seven and a half, that gives you 15, 15 from, uh, the 45 gives you 30, the width of the house is 24. You've got to have a driveway width that's greater. Yeah. Okay? So the, the trade off we made was to try to have a rear yard. Because the, I had an original plan, they could put the parking at the rear. But if I could if I just follow Norm's thought for just yeah. a minute. If you flip the cars on the other side of the house and move the house to the right, you would have the driveways. Would that make sense? If you had the, because that way the, um, but then the house will be closer to the other house. I'm not sure which one makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, just thinking it out. Yeah, I'm just kind of thinking well, it out loud. The ACA, in terms of the building of the house, I can't change the lot size, frontage, and the lot size. Yeah, the home is good. relatively small. It's 24 by 32. But as I understand it, you're saying, couldn't you flip and put the parking on I'm the just, We're just thinking it out here. But then it yeah. puts the house right up against the other house, and is that better? I, I don't know what the answer is. But They're always true. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's right. the point. And, and, and I'll give you one that, as I said, that we, that we did have a plan for that would uh, meet all the requirements to put the vehicles in the room and take up part of the area. But then you still need a driveway to get there, so you still have the same. You'd have a driveway, but it would be there would be no parking and vehicles until you put them into the rear. Let me ask the question: most of the most of the houses on that side of the street, the parking's all on the right, and they all seem to be pretty much up against the other houses, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three feet, four feet. That's, that's what I'm asking. I mean, they're, yeah. they're they're in close proximity. They're not right. 12, 15, 20 feet away. They're within seven, five feet, three feet. Right. Yeah. And they're all set up the same way going down the street, which is pretty common in a neighborhood like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have, you will have your chance. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Was, no, no. Go ahead. There's more than one way to do it, I acknowledge, but there are unlimited ways right. to do it. No. I get it. And that uh, it always involves choices. and. Uh, but overall, we thought, it, we could be wrong, we thought this was the better choice. I didn't say it was the best choice, but given that the size of the lot that's there, and that it's a single family uh, proposed in an R2 district, a single family house is going on that lot. It's, it's going to be best for the neighborhood, it's going to be best for the city, uh, it's going to provide housing for somebody, 
it's going to actually increase the values of properties along there because somebody's making a substantial investment in building a brand new home. I'm not going to ask because I don't know. It's the same setup as the building that was there before, correct? The house was there and the parking was on yeah, the right. Yeah, the house there. I, I want to get to my point when you're going to get to the right. I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Before yeah. the other house yeah. was there. I have a picture well, of the prior house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was on, um, let me find, but it was, I think this was the, uh, yeah, was. the older house. I know, but it should be, right? Oh, yes. Where, where is the house on this side, the right side? I mean, how close is it to the line? Not the driveway side. Oh, driveway on the other side. The driveway on the right hand side. Is the driveway. The way the house is set up is it goes house, driveway, house, driveway, house, driveway. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's house, the way the subdivision goes. Right. That's the picture I just looked at. That's why I asked. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this would. So yeah. that. Yeah. 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 The neighbor, I'm concerned with is right here. The parking stand, which I have no problem. It's a tight side anyway. Yeah, and uh, if there's only three feet here, you have to be a ballerina dancer to get out of the car to get, to get by that. Is there any way you can move that over a little? Well, uh, a foot, foot and a half. As I said before, this is often like a jigsaw puzzle. If I move one piece on the board, it affects others. So, yeah, the house could be moved over and you'd have greater ability to get out of the car, but you're not a violation on the other side of the sidewalk. I, I know that. I know that. That's why I asked you how much distance there was between the houses. You try to maintain 15 feet, which is more than that, even if you move it over. I, I don't know. I don't have a, a plan that shows. Yeah, it shows this house. Well, I don't know what that distance is. Full base well, right. He's asking Dave, the house that's over here. Is it? How far from that line is the house that's existing that's already right. there? Oh, the parking is driving yeah. there, so... Well, how wide is the traffic? Give a guess. 12 feet. All right, so that would mean this 7, 5, and 12 feet is enough so you could move that a couple of feet to get enough room here. This, this is going to be an active area here. So that, that 3 feet is really nothing. You, you open the door and the door half opens and it, it hits. Maybe a fence or something. So how do you get in that the fence? You're going to have to move this over somewhat. Be another barrier for you. Well, that's what I'm saying. It would be a side. We'd be creating a violation on this right. side. Right. Well, mm -hmm. well, that's okay. We we can give you relief on that. I'm not, I'm just saying the distance. I'm more concerned about the distance between the houses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a driveway the here. Line is a good I understand. Feet. I understand what you're saying. That's why I'm saying you have the ability to move a little bit towards there. Well, I understood, maybe I misunderstood, that the, the, one of the suggestions was, was to flip it and to put the parking on the side that you're talking about. Yeah. Not a suggestion, more just thinking well, just thinking, loud, but just thinking, uh, thinking yeah. about that. So, and, and, and as I understand it, because that would put driveway to driveway, mm -hmm. is what Dave is saying. But then based on what Mr. Gersona was saying, that would not be in conformity with the neighborhood. So I'm not sure which one makes sense, to be honest with you. So. All, all I'm looking for is the area where they're going to tamper. That's the issue. It's it's tight, yeah. It's yeah, going to be got, bigger than this here. I don't know. It might it's be tight. Well, whether you flip it. Four, seven and a half feet. Because the petition doesn't work. Oh, no, we have to be. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. But see, they have to have enough room well, between the house to this open point. this door, both sides. No, you're saying? It's too tight. It's a tight area. And I want hey, it to great. be flat. Excuse me? It's not flat. It's not flat. That's right. It isn't flat and it isn't striped. And it needs both. Well, that could be done. That will have to give us the read to do that. Yeah, but but they always put the posts in. They never draw spray the line right <coughs> so we can see the outline. You know, so you want to paint? Paint always. That's what we ask for all the time. Orange sticks. And there just was just to get a spray can. Paint between the posts. So that they would want we can't paint the outline of the houses. 
can stake it out for four, yeah. four, I four steaks. Be steak, oh, I want to be able to look yeah. at yeah. it. Yeah, orange yeah. steaks or whatever you want to do. Yeah, but also the draw line between them so you see the outline. That'd be good. Huh? Yeah. Of the uh, parking. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know, but I, I'm a visual person. And no, it's, I said, well, I'm in other words, what I'm saying. It doesn't. I don't think it has to be read that does it, anybody can do it, as long as it's what's there. Well, we want it to be accurate. Yes. Yeah, we, that's why we hire a guy that's got the stamp that says he measured it exactly. Yeah, that's right. And where's yeah, your landscaping? <laughs> the entire we, uh, we, we sacrifice. Well, I want to see it. I want to see what you're going to do. Grass. Well, it's not enough. Not enough? That, right. that, I don't think there's a rear yard that big for any of the other houses. You're not going to have any, uh, any bushes or anything? What would you like? Oh, I just would like you to show me what you're going to do. Well, the problem is, if I pick four, you might want six. Why don't you tell me what no, you would I like? No, I never asked Hillary well, how species. many, she wants I never tell you how many. Yeah. Yeah. I'll provide That's a tough one, didn't you? Uh, I just that's what I know about saying, plants. You know me. You know I always and, want to see the landscape. And this is what happens, you see, that by paying, paying deference to we, the, that's got nothing to do with the zoning code, but putting that aside, right. okay, you have to putting that aside, something. okay, you have to, do to deal else. with that issue, we decided not, we could have perfectly pulled the vehicles in the rear, made the 15-foot rear yard, and not had a parking violation. We decided, in deference, to not do that, and to sack the cars, and ask you to give us a variance for the five-foot but we could ask you to just let us build that house, and we can park in the rear, and there'll be less green space. But there's always see. those traders. That's fine, but I want to see some kind of landscaping. Yeah. I'm here for what's in the best interest. I want, to, I want the place to look good. Yes. Thank you. John, you think that John Connor, who's got a great reputation in the city, has built five homes, he doesn't want it to look good? I don't know John Connor. Is that okay? I ask this of every person, and you know that. Everyone that comes here, I want to see your landscaping, and you know that. And in recognition of that, we put the parking where it is, but we're not required to do that. We could put the parking in the rear yard yes, you and have less green space. You could. And then we could bring in a landscaping plan of the less green space. And you could also hot top the whole damn backyard. No. I know. We're not I know, I know you know, but I'm just telling you, you could do that too. All right. But what we're trying to do is replace a building that the city of Lynn City Council said was a nuisance at the neighborhood. It took them two and a half years to tear it down. And we want to build a brand new house. In order to do that, we can't make the lot bigger, we can't make the frontage bigger. We can move pieces on the board, and we can show bushes and trees. But ultimately, we need relief to build on that lot, a single building home. Anyone else wishing to, anyone, any other questions from the board? Same size. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, the hearing is closed for those wishing to speak in favor. Anyone in opposition? Please come up and give your name and address. Hi, my name is Danielle Giordano. I live at 37 Roll Out, and the property we're talking about is adjacent to my property. Um, I'm not really familiar, but I'd like to say to Mr. Vitale, the pro I've been there for 13 years. The house has been vacant, yes, it got torn down, yes. But it was sent into foreclosure, so it was never a nuisance. It was sent into foreclosure by, by the owner. She could pay payments, they went to foreclosure, they had people in front of the house turned yeah. out. They remedied it, they made their payments, then they came back and they foreclosed on them again. So it wasn't that it was a nuisance, it's just that they couldn't afford it. It became a nuisance when it became foreclosed upon. Our neighborhood, after a year, started having rats. I called down to the city, the city gave me a rat box. I have a rat box still, two years, two plus years later. I've had probably three rats in my yard, I've had to call the city to come and move one that was half dead. The house, when it was lived in, was never in use. It got torn down, unbeknownst to anybody on the street. I got it came in with this demolition truck, and me and my child sat across the street, and we watched them take it down with no fire marshal, no nothing. 
They came in, they got sighted, they had to stop, they had to get a hose, whatnot. But it was never, never a problem house. I mean, people lived there, they were young. Um, the way it looks, I mean, you're looking at my house, the house is on the left. The driveway got into my, right up to my grass line. So I don't know if it's my property line or whatnot, but it, the driveway is right up to my grass line. I have a fence, I've been there for 13 years. They were in and out, they were able to get in and out of the house, but their house was close. They do have a substantial size backyard. If they took the two big pine trees, they have two, they have two big pine trees there, there's gigantuan, and they sat on the house. They had a little deck that came off, came down because they had handicap access. So the house, front porch, almost as big as mine, um, single family nice, driveway, basement. The house was crappy to look at, but it was there. I mean, I'm looking forward to a house. If you can make it conform to not taking any more my property line and not taking any more hers or whatnot, if they can do it. Yes, it's gonna increase my property value. It's gonna make the neighborhood look great. I'm not opposed to the house. I'm just opposed to him saying that it was a problem house from the get-go. I've been there for 13 years. So it's not. It was never. Um, so you're not opposed to the, the house? You're opposed to what he said? No, I'm opposed to him. I, I don't know. We just found out. I, about, we got the letter in the mail. A couple of my neighbors are here. So we're trying to figure out, is it the three feet that from whose property line? My property line or her property line? Yours. I don't understand yours, the verbiage yours. on the um, Yours. This is the proposed house. This yeah. is your house property. This is... Okay. What I'm Can I just flip it this way, sorry. Um, sure, so this is your house, yeah. your stockade fence is probably yeah. right along this line right here, yeah. if I'm and not mistaken. Yes, and then I have a, like a few inches after it, because I just... So basically, what it seems to me, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, they're looking to put approximately the same size house okay. in the same footprint location that the other house was in, with the same tandem parking that was always there. Right. Is that it? That's yes. correct? Well, that's a perfect agreement. Nope. So, yeah. And they had a shed, and they had a, sh a, a garage here. They had a decent size garage. Exactly. I don't even care about that. But they have a lot of yard. I mean, huh? and it ha has a lot of weed and dirt yeah. that's overrun right now. It's, yeah. If you go and look at it, you'll oh, all yeah. you did. We've all been there. Yeah, we've seen the trash, yeah. and we've seen it collects. Yeah. And the, the neighbor on Roland Terrace put up a fence because it became a cut through and a hangout for the high school kids that were hanging out and stuff there. So. Wow. Huh? The poor kids. Yes, I know the poor kids. They can't go out and smoke anymore. So in essence, you're really not opposed to this yeah. house. No, I'm not opposed to the house being built. I just want like, a little information. We all want yeah. information yeah. to see what's going That's on, fine. how it's going to do. And you were talking about the property that across the street from us, there's a house, that's in two single families, and they share a drive, like his driveway and their driveway. Yeah. So they have a, a common. common driveway. Thank you. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't want to have you put down as your opposed. Right, I'm not opposed. And I, I just wanted to speak. Okay, to you make it speak seems to me like it could be a good fit. They can make it be a good fit. Right, I have three kids. Yeah. I have three young kids. So it's. I want to make sure that mm -hmm. what happens is not going to. When this is going to happen, how long it's going to take. You know, all, all the stuff. Of, we well, should all be well informed. Well, if it's a problem, no one can tell you. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm wasting your time, I feel like. No, no, you're not. No, 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 no. That's all I said. I mean, okay. <laughs> you're giving us a civic question. Sam. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I could be like the other guy and have 25 pages. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. If this gets approved, and there's a, there's a, what's the earliest that, what's the earliest that you could pop a foundation in there? You plan on doing it before winter? We could just start right away. Okay. You can do it before winter? Yes. I have a question, because when we had the, the rodents from the, uh, not abandoned, but the vacant home before it got torn down, I don't know what's living in there, because it's just, they just threw all the rubble into the basement area, the foundation. So when you pull it out, what are you going to do to protect the community at large if anything comes out of that ground, like rats and rodents, and by way of that? Sure, I'm removing what was in there. They hit them with a match. Oh, well, to a down, they filled it with solid fill. Right? No, they didn't. They, they, they filled it with what the house was. 
I don't think so. I don't think it goes back to the You didn't see the guy. I, I wish I had the video because I videotaped the whole thing. There's um, no way that they imploded the house and left the. Well, the no, they took, they took. They had to fill it with something. Did they take the phone? Yeah, they, they, it would have to be inspected. Right. Is it everybody that's yeah. turning off in the city of Lyon? Okay, so no whatever way. comes out. National grid, the water and sewer, yeah. road yeah. control, dig safe, the DPW, the line. I'm not, I'm not arguing or contesting what you got signed off on. I'm just How asking, do you get in inside? I'm just asking about what what can you do with this should the neighborhood become infested with burning? Well, what he can do, and I'm sure he'll do it if we put in the water, is we have him, the new home have him bait the neighborhood. Home. Oh, I'm what? He, he can bait the neighborhood. He can put the the, the, the bait out ahead of time so okay. that. Right. And, and that's what I'm asking. I'm inspectional okay. services will we'll put that yeah. on. It's going to increase the value of my home. Yeah. Inspectional services will make them do that. Same as when they tear it down. Mm -hmm. It's incumbent on the, the, the person that does it. They're supposed to they didn't do, do the road and control. <clears throat> that, then that's a, an issue. You they, walk they, right they, into inspectional yeah. services, and they'll be more than happy to help you. It was more <clears throat> after the fact that I got my broom traps. I mean, they went in and they said they found all kinds of gross stuff. But you know what, Lisa, do you want to talk? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition, please come up and give your name and address. Hi, Lisa Allen. I live on 43 Roman Ave, so I'm the neighbor on the other side. I don't know if I'm in opposition, but I have some concerns. Um, so the house that was there previously was actually right at my driveway. So when they took it down, they had to leave the concrete because if they took it, my driveway was gonna go with it. So I wanna make sure that that's gonna, like what, if the house going right back there, is it? Well, the house I will be to, like, remain. seven and a half feet off the property line. Okay, so what will they do with that concrete that's, that's like just concrete on the side holding my driveway up? On your property or on? It's on the other property. Well, then if, if it would disturb your property, we would cut it, we, so it would not disturb your property. Okay, so you might leave it then? I just want to make sure, because yeah. the guy who took the house down said that if he removes that, my driveway would come so with why it. So why not just hammer it out a little gray and leave it? We will not disturb your property. So you just make sure that the driveway is remaining? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so basically the house will I just go back I know what you mean. I did see that. I know yeah, okay, I mean. yeah. So, I mean, basically it's the the basement foundation mm -hmm. that was there from the previous house. They just didn't take it away, so. Well, how can, how can we make sure that she, she, there's no irreparable harm to this her, to her properties? Well, they get a concrete slot. I would leave the wall there. They find out where the line is and just on it. Just cut it off so we, below grade and cover it up. Leave, it, leave what's below it's grade there. Concrete slot, cut it. Yeah, just yeah. leave it. Leave what's underground underground. It's not hurt anything. Okay, so the house won't exactly be right where it was. Seven and a half feet away from the yes, property. Yeah. Right. It'll be nicer right. than the other one was. <laughs> the other one was like right there. Um, are you going to take the trees down? Hopefully not. Yeah, that, that was another factor. You're talking about landscape. We wanted to preserve the existing trees. I would like you to take those trees down. <laughs> I, I, I made mention of that to someone when I was there. Not with the trees. Those two big trees. I just don't know how the roots are going on that. Uh, in my yard. In my yard. <laughs> oh, they big tree. Yeah, I have a lot of, on my deck, I put my deck on, and I tile, like, refinish my deck with a new, whatever, post on it. But yeah. now, all my, in between, I have all kinds of pine needles from those trees. And I've got those branches that fly in, the pine cones fly in. So you're really not in opposition? No, as long as my driveway doesn't suffer any harm, mm -hmm. and a nice house goes there, I'm perfectly fine with that. I would prefer that they took at least one of those trees down, because it is coming into my property, but like up above the grass into my property. Well, I'm going to ask them to do that. And they have a lot of it. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? Anyone in opposition? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm in opposition. My name is Mary Reinhardt, and I'm at 35 on the other side of this uh, 437. And and I'm, I'm just so, I'm, because we don't do this every day, I'm just curious, this three foot variation, it's what's always been there, it's the way the house was when it was there before, is that, is that a true statement or is that something new now? I didn't, I never saw the house. That was yeah. before no. it was torn down. Well, the year. letter that we got said a three-foot variation, and, and, and if that's what was there before, then there's, this is all to do about nothing. But if it's something new, it's something that, that um, it says uh, the 
frontage, the lot size, and the frontage of the driveway three feet from the property line. Mm -hmm. If I look, if I look at online at a photo of the house that was there and the driveway that was next to it, it looks to me like pretty much the same scenarios going back. But the way it sounds from the neighbor over here is the house is going to be a little bit further off of her property line. Of what, what is it? Basically, they're doing the same different style house. Yeah. See, see yeah, that's the new part. The band. See, see yeah. the thing is done. Oh, it's the they they they're they're going to do it. See, they show you the old house. Mm -hmm. Where are you, please? I'm over here. I'm over there. So there's, uh, what is that, 13. Five. There wasn't from way. the house to the line. There this was your update on the building. This the line between mm -hmm. them. So nope, this is uh, 40, 37, and I'm 35. I'm over here. Yeah. This house is actually smaller than the house that was used to be there. The house that they're going to put up is going to be a smaller footprint than so, the house. So, what's the deal with the thing that's asking for a variant, three foot variance for a driveway? Because in order, in order to get the setback on this side that they need, the seven and a half feet, yeah. they move the house over. Like, this abutter over here said the foundation was right against their driveway yeah. before, so mm -hmm. they're moving the house in to get it conforming on that side, which makes the parking on this side oh. non-conforming. So it's not the house, it's the parking. Con yeah, uh -huh. conform one side or not, yeah. Right. Right. And when the house was built, they, the zoning regulations weren't in effect at that time. Yeah. So that's why now that you've got the zoning in place, now on these older lots and existing neighborhoods, now you have these violations. Right. I would suspect if, if, if this abutter here, if you went to do something to your house in addition, you'd, you'd run into the same, you'd, you'd be sitting in the same scenario because yeah. your driveway's on the property line. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of going yeah. in unison with what's in the neighborhood on that side of the street, I, I guess is my opinion, but you guys look at Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Anyone in opposition? <laughs> this is the one sentence really quickly. Um, this is the and I think she said it This was last year. Day day this is my, the side control. of the driveway. Uh, and it's, uh, my green grass is right there it's into the, the pavement. It's like you put a fence up now, though. No, that, my fence has always been there. That, that, that fence has been there for probably like six or seven. My husband again was seven. So at least seven years. Black boxes are blowing that stuff. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else wishes to speak in oh, opposition? No, that's my fence. Hearing none, the hearing is closed. Yeah. For those wishing to speak so in opposition, what is the wish of the fence. board? That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Second. With two stipulations that the uh, petitioner uh, bring in a uh, supply and landscape plan for the plot, like right? the chair lady is talking about. And the other thing is to see if you can tweak that parking to give more room on, on the left side. Because it's very close. When you open the door for a car, you only get nearly three feet there. You gotta look that over. Give it to who is it, Ralph Reed? See what you can do with it. That's what I'd like to see. What exactly is it, the second stipulation? I'm not. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, why don't we still? Why don't we still? Why don't we give them relief on a foot on the other side? The, the, make it yeah. Well, well, the other possibility is. Let me just consider this: that if we extend the drive, in other words, we put more hot dog and we bring it here further yeah. into the backyard. Yeah, that would help. Then. The house over that way, foot. Well, that's the other. Yeah. Yeah. It was on the yeah. property line. I mean, yeah. So instead of seven and a half feet, you left six and a half feet. I guess. Yeah, but do that, do that the, the only thing is they didn't ask for a side yard yeah, variance on that. So you'd have to right. re advertise right. it. Yeah. Would you? Oh, yeah. yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah, we can't grant it, and I don't think if it's not yeah. asked for. Right. So. If he moves the house over. Then they have to come back before the boys be re advertised because that was only six and a half feet. We do that no. Even with even with the abutter was over there sitting there. Yeah, the legal requirement would be yeah, come back to the new petition. Out. Yeah, it's right. not what was in the petition. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mr. Vitale says to move the tandem back towards the rear. That would help. Yeah. But with still the same three and a half foot right. setback for the parking. Yeah, well, I'm just not sure what the yes. stipulation well, is. Well, this car would be back here. You could you'd have more room anyway. Oh, so we're just extending the driveway back further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
No, no, it's right You now. could open the door. If, if the cars are further back from, as I understand it, Mr. Callan's in, you got the sideline, you got the house, and when you open the doors, that's the problem. So what I was saying in terms of one of the ways to have Mr. Reed address it is that uh, we don't park the vehicles behind the house, which is the plan that we originally have, but we further extend the drive so when they open, they can park up in here and we file a plan that shows them parking up in there. Yes, yes. And we can get you Can I just get a clarification since people for the trees or against the trees? Against the trees. Because we, we thought about the trees and said we should leave them, but now, and then I talked to, to David, David saying that, uh, and apparently one of the people has confirmed that the roots may extend. So if that happens, then there's even more open space, but there's two less trees. Yeah. Uh, the, well, we should put something in their place. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, and, and the other thing is, They've gone as hard as they've gone. Now they're on a downswing. You get a good hurricane. Could oh, the hot, yeah, could the come down on a new house. house. I was afraid. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, so get rid of if you wanted to say, uh, John, so, so if you wanted to say that one of the stipulations is that we remove the existing trees and replace them with whatever. Something. Yeah. 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 That's a long time. But that could be included with the proposed landscaping plan. Right. Yeah. So we're not going to mess with the parking. They're going to extend the parking lot. Well, they're going to slide it. Right. Slide it back. back. Yeah, and again, don't forget, these spaces are nine feet. So I know. unless they have a, a, a nine-foot vehicle, they will have more room to open the doors yeah. on the side. Um, so I would second that. And again, it's, although it's probably going to be done anyways, just to stipulate that, that the area will be baited for rodents. Okay. When you start digging, when you start removing the uh, yeah. the soil there for the foundation, do we know how far back we're moving the parking? Just to clarify the stipulation for Jim. Kick it a space. Go the oh. 18. Yeah, go 18 more. So 18 feet more. Yeah. Because again, if you put the it make the stack parking in an older neighborhoods is far superior than pushing the houses back and now putting the two. Because now you're ruining the line of the <laughs> right. So uh, I, that's why in these cases like this, I agree. The stack parking, and then the other thing is, if you put them in the back, then you have no backyard. Right. Exactly. So it, yeah. you know, there's a trade-off, right, Sam? Yeah. There's always a trade-off. What do you do in the old days with big old trees when they want to build? Yeah, yeah, you can put it in there. Yeah. Yeah. So as a stipulation is a, a revised plan. A revised landscaping plan to with, include uh, removal landscaping of trees. Landscaping plan, removal yes. of trees, yeah. and moving just, stack parking. No, just showing another car spot back to right. the end. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Motion okay. made by Great. Mr. Callan. Second, excuse me. Excuse me. Motion made by Mr. Callan, seconded by Mr. Cole, to grant with the, with the few stipulations. Mr. Mendez? Yes, to grant. Yes, to grant. Mr. Gisono? Yes. Yes, to grant. Mr. Cole? Yes. Yes, to grant. Mr. Callan? Yes, to grant. Yes, to grant. Mrs. Curl? Yes, to grant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. That's what we need. Oh, okay. okay? 
that's what's missing. See, you've changed from a traditional footing of foundation. I've never seen a change in that area to what you want. So therefore, you've got to convince the board that that change you're making that has a structural engineer stamp on it and a section right through it. Do you know what that is? Yeah, yeah, section drawing. Section. All we're looking for is a section drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Typically in a floodplain, yeah. they're trying to get you up, not down. Yeah. That's why it's you need it's a about, you, about weeds engineering on the elevation you want? No, no. He wants we a foundation want, cut. Well, we, we want, want the cut, elevation so. everything. But what we, we want... We need a structural engineer, though. The, the foundation... Here's what I want. Now, don't try to change my mind. <laughs> it's a structural engineer section through the slab, the proposed slab that you want to do. I got no opposition to what you want to do, but it's got a, this is a big change in the, in, the, in the support of that building. See? Well, just, I'm just trying to figure out what it is you need. In that yeah, section, it's like you cut something down and you look at this. You know what was the decision? It's a section through, like the wall section. Yeah, same thing. Unanimous. By a structural engineer. Yeah. Not a designer like you are, I am. Structural engineer. Okay. Pat, is this something that it takes a, uh, a long deal of time? No, no, it doesn't. It's just a section through. So could we vote on this and then? Yes, we can. And, 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 it, and then he gets and, it in before it gets fired. Yeah, 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 we can do that. that. Yeah. I, I just want you to know the foundation is going to be higher. Huh? The foundation is not going to be structural engineer. No, it's below. What we want is a section through the slab, showing the finish of the slab. Okay, and we can we can pass it with the stipulation that you provide that. So basically this is the same house. Same house, same slab on grade. And it's the reason why we approved that other plan without the, because whoever was dealing with it before ran into this and that's why we, the last right. one we approved was a slap. We, we've done, we've had Ralph redo the elevation plan and the 10 feet mark would be right around here. I'm so just, I, was, I was asking more for, for curiosity reasons oh, than anything yeah. else, why you were going away from a conventional foundation to a slab on grade. I think the answer is maybe it's a simple one. Is that at elevation ten and a half, you don't have to have flood insurance, mm -hmm. and flood insurance is like two thousand a year. No, I get that. It mitigates the flood insurance for the buyer. It makes it more. more okay, whatever, okay. whatever. The finish of the slab, section through by a, by a structure, oh, by an engineer. Okay. Structural engineer. I get it. This they house, get this house right. isn't going to be any higher. Uh, it's not, it, this house is not going to be any higher. No, no. no. How does the slab on grade get up? Change his height. The chain makes it low. The utilities and everything is going to be above 10.5. It has to be, right. Oh, That's okay. the floodplain, it's 10.5. Yeah. If it's an elevation, 10.5. It's going to be inside the house. Yeah. Whereas the, the basement with utilities under the basement. So, you have, so the slab's not going to be on grade. The slab's going to be at the first floor level still. It's going to be at 10.5. <laughs> What's grade? Oh, like seven something. Yeah. Uh, you're really okay, so it's, seven seven it's about three feet different, two and a half feet different. Yeah. yeah. So right. like getting, this isn't the house, but it's going to look similar. Yeah. To yeah. yeah. You should have brought these. Seven point five. Why do you disagree? I don't. I'm just. I, I've done it quite a bit. I've done so much stuff on Plum Island and places like that. Yeah. I've just never. Well, I've never heard of putting a slab on grade up high like that. Neither have I. Never heard of that. Well, I thought he was talking about a slab on grade, actual grade, because you'd need the pressure relief right. that. You'd be taking so the water from the foundation. No, 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 no. Well, let me say it again for the 88th time. You can put a slab the way you want it. When a structural engineer's section foot. But what haven't you seen in the seven years? Uh, huh? I'm asking what you haven't seen. I haven't seen, especially in places like that, where a slab on grade, sometimes you do that for a garage. You put down some fresh stone, you dig down a little bit. This evidently is not what they're going to do. But we want to know okay. where the change has gone from a traditional footing and foundation to this slab mm -hmm. they're talking about. We want a clarification. Okay. What is the wish of the board? So moved. Grant the petition with the stipulation that they submit the right. uh, plan before it gets filed by Janet. Second. 
Motion made by Mr. Cole, seconded by Mr. Mendez to grant. Please call the roll. Mr. Mendez? Yes. Yes to grant, Mr. Gisono? Yes to grant. Yes to grant, Mr. Cole? Yes. Yes to grant, Mr. Callan? Yes to grant. Yes to grant, Mrs. Curley? Yes to grant. Meeting adjourned. Motion made. Adjourned all the time.